Hi there, uh, Dr. Bill White again, and I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and we have a wonderful teaching facility, and it, we travel around over the country to teaching. And if you're a general or pediatric dentist, or it doesn't matter, you can be an orthodontist. We have some orthodontists come take courses from us, and uh, we are there primarily to teach orthodontics to general and pediatric dentists. So anyway, I'm going to talk a little more about this intruding wire and working on an extremely deep bite case here. And uh, I'll uh, get in here with it. Uh, I've decided to just call it my own arch wire because I came up with this quietly, quite by accident did we put some wires on a case and I have one video on how it was born and so I'm going to call it just the Bill Wyatt intruding wire and I've been lecturing on it all around over the United States and in several foreign countries too about it so this is going to be used now on a very deep bite case and we'll go in and I'll show you this case this fellow right here came from all the way across Fort Worth on the south side of another town uh, up to Hearst. Uh, Dennis sent him to me uh, that had taken some courses from us. And he's a real nice guy. He is an air traffic controller and he has to be able to speak. And so you can't put anything in his mouth that uh, affects his speech at all. So that was something we had to work around. Uh, he's got a fairly uh, low angle case. And of course the mouth is kind of, uh, the lips are kind of cupped in a little bit. Got a nice smile, friendly fella. But it's, his facial structure comes in right like that. We'd like to fill this out at least a little bit. And maybe give him a little more length of the facial structure here make him look better and it says get rid of this deep deep bite will make it where he can chew so much better so anyway that's what we're going to try to accomplish in this uh, case if you had this deep a bite you can't chew worth a heck in other words you have to chew this straight up and down you can't move your teeth from side to side you see his cusp has been worn down at his age, everything. All right, let's look at it from the front. You can't even see the lower anterior teeth behind the centrals. They come down completely over them. And the, the lower anterior teeth come up to the gum line on the teeth, the upper teeth right here. So, and he's in a kind of a, this, not a terribly bad class two, but it's, it is def, definitely class two. Now, when I look down on the upper teeth, you can pick up some evidence of the track of these lower teeth right up in here, and they wear the back side of the upper teeth. You see, worn down, so that's quite the edge of the teeth is kind of sharp where they have worn off right across there. Now he's got a little crookedness, of course, in the, these ladders. We're going to try to straighten all that out. And we're going to bring these teeth forward, and they'll be torqued quite differently when you get through with it. Now, looking at the lower arch, you can see they're very crowded, and this fits right in behind the upper teeth, and these teeth go all the way the gum line which I'll show you on the model. He had had a very bad tooth here. I think it may have been cracked or abscessed or whatever. It was in bad shape. They couldn't even do root canal so they extracted the tooth. So we're going to have to save this space and he can get an implant put in this area right here. Uh, that won't uh, bother us. We kind of wait till we're virtually through with this to come in and uh, have the implant, have them start working on the implant. All right, on the models, you can see it a little bit better. 
look at it from different angles but this is a deep bite and it's hard to chew with a bite like this look at it from the front again don't see the lower anterior teeth on this side now you've got this big gap and we're going to have to keep that gap open so we'll wear a tube on the arch wire between the brackets of the bicuspid and the molar here to hold that the same as we go through the case then they can come in and put the implant in that area okay the lower anterior you put your camera up against the back of the model and shoot it and you can see where these teeth fit right up against the gum tissue up above here he wasn't stripping the gum off I've seen cases where they actually were stripping the gum tissue and it, it's pretty much that way we started him in 306 uh, now again the, looking at that from different angles and that's just another shot of that all right we took several panorexes and I use the old panorex where we cut down the center and but this is really the best thing for orthodontics because you can see where these teeth meet and the lower teeth uh, come up to this point on the upper teeth and the upper teeth come up to that point. In other words, you got this much uh, overbite and uh, if you put these teeth edge to edge, you'll have a gap back here just about this size right here you'll have a gap in these teeth back in this area showing you how much problem we've got uh, here to deal with now if this were going to be a long time you might want to put a, a little saddle in here but it's we'll have the arch wire on there control keep this space open as we go through it and keep these teeth from dropping down in that to some extent. Now, this is another panorex just a little later. That's 0306. And here we still haven't started the case. All right, here we've started and leveled the bite. And let me go back. You see where these bottom teeth are? The upper teeth come down here. These come up to there. Now we go to here. So this has been intruded. Now these teeth are not buried in the bone. The bone goes down with the teeth. And that happens all the time. Now if you want to bury one, you have to hold these where they are and push one, then you can uh, do that. But that does not happen when we level a bite. You don't sink the teeth in the bone. The old bone structure around those teeth, it go up, goes up with the teeth and goes down with the teeth. And you see these teeth are not buried up in the bone. We'll go back and look at an earlier deal. You see the bone in the teeth is about the same as it is when you before you started here okay now this is just a close-up and we'll show these brackets that we've got on in the archway we've got an archway in the front and we've already leveled this bite but there was a lot of rocky ground between uh, where, before when we started and where we got to this point right here all right, here are some excellent pictures of that intruding wire. Now, this is uh, your regular wire is down underneath here. It's a kind of a wildcat wire. It's rotating and leveling and doing a whole bunch of work itself. But we started all this day one, you know, from the time we start. Uh, we put this stuff on there. And so you'll get a bite leveled with this two or three months before you can do it, working to get a wire big enough to actually start doing that yourself. Now, you can put those little curvature wires in there, but 
they sink the back teeth and the back of the knees high. They'll work some, but they're not near as efficient as this uh, intruding wire that we've shown you. That's from the front. And you brought it up, you see, and tied it on to the other arch wire here. And we tie this wire on to the brackets actually in here. And it's going to pick those teeth up and take these down. It's hard to, to visualize what will take place in here. And as this levels out, this bone structure moves down here. It'll elevate a little back here. We put a bite plate in here to open this guy's bite. We wanted these teeth to come together some. And they do come together a little bit back here in the back. And that elevates our vertical dimension of the face. Now watch this level out as we go through. Well, I missed a bunch of pictures in there because we just had it level at one time. But this is the, uh, the bite. He can't actually close his teeth because we bonded some acrylic behind these upper central teeth. I first tried to do this with a removable uh, device in here with a bite plate on it. But he couldn't speak clearly, and he was discouraged, you know, and I was worried, and he was ready to quit. He was just going to quit, and I said, no, just let me try something else. Uh, I can get something in here that you can talk with, because he has to be able to speak clearly, and the pilots have to understand him in there, so that's a necessary thing. So we bonded some of triad acrylic on the lingual side of these upper anterior teeth and this hits there now during this period he has to do his chewing up here and you have to have a good jaw joint to do that because when you bite down up here with 10 pounds of force the joint is right back here next to the muscles there may be 20 or 25 pounds back here in the back on the joint here and people with weak joints you can't do that except you have to put something on part of it and go partly at the time. It makes it a lot more difficult, but his joints were tough, and we were able to do that. Now, there it is. You can kind of see underneath there a little bit where we had a, the bite plate bonded on the back of those teeth. Now, okay. Now, this was the upper we put a removable appliance in here and it's not real big but he could not speak good with this and we were going along good but he said I just can't speak good the guys can't understand me and I'm going to have to quit and then stop so I said okay don't do that let us try we just bonded something right along there on those teeth I think I've got a picture of that down the line here. And we're leveling this out. That's the lower end here. Okay, here's the upper art. We've got, I can see the different color. We've got that bonded up there. See, these teeth are much closer together now, you see, right here. There's not very much space in here. We've got them almost edge to edge. And at first, this was a great big gap in there. Now, this is coming together, and we're holding this space open right here. It looks like it's trying to close a little. I think we put this tube on there. All right. Now we're much closer. You see these teeth are hitting this acrylic strip that's on the anterior teeth up here. And he has to do his chewing up here. So if somebody wants these teeth fixed, they have to help you. You can't just go in there unless you went in and surgically remove them, and some people do, but this is ridiculous. When you can do this good a job, they just take a little bit of time to do this. Now, all right, here is that pad. This is simple to do. You just 
etch the back of these upper front teeth. You can put on the six anterior teeth. And then you, if you bind this triad, you get a little bottle of liquid. And you can get that. I mean, you may have to order it separately. And you etch this and paint that liquid on there. And you have some of this white stuff rolled up and thin. And then when it's painted on there, you take your white, more solid material that you can work. Put it in there and press it up against that. Try to keep it. I'll just try to keep it off the gum some and push it in there and you can carve it and move it around and do whatever you want. But now he could talk with this where he couldn't talk with a, an appliance in the mouth, you see. So he could speak with this. And so he let us keep it. I could have trimmed it a little more because all I need is really this portion right here where these teeth meet. Okay, now coming in here, as we open the bite, space begins to open in here, and we start lining these teeth up, and we'll use some class 2 elastics, but most of the class 2 will just almost correct itself. Now, you may not believe that, but if you unlock just get the lower anteriors out of the roof of the mouth and raise the upper, and there's space for them. These jaws, most of the time, will want to move out. And I've had them actually do the total correction without putting any kind of class two mechanics on, on the case. Okay, now here we come in and we put this tube to make sure this space doesn't close up anymore over here. And we're just getting pretty leveled out now but he still can't get his back teeth together but we continue on with this now it's getting closer and you notice the torque in the upper front teeth let me show back here you see this is way down like this it's kind of getting this way and then finally get around where well, these teeth will be Coming in, and your inner incisal angle will be good when you finish up with the case. Okay, that's the best one right here. And same thing, this is gradually going on. I'm going kind of slow and explaining everything as we go. And you see, these teeth in here are what's putting the force on this. And it's cocking these back. You see how they look? And there's open space in here. It'll take this tooth back also right there. It'll back up some. But we need to keep this gap where we can put the implant in there. All right. We've just about got this thing open now. The guy, we, we don't want these teeth to separate up here in the front. As we torque them out, as we raise this up, so we lace this. This is an inner lacing that goes in before the arch wire is open. And you put your arch wire on top of this, you see, and that brings it together. Now, these are those speed brackets we use on there. Now, those are not, to my way of thinking, they're not worth getting. I can do this much faster and better. With just a little bitty bracket we had been using and the staff wanted to get rid of them too. So we got rid of it. It is now 9 of 07 and uh, we've got him just about straight and leveled out here. Now if we get it open a little bit further, see so we've got class 2 elastics on him here and probably I'm wearing them over here. I don't see them on that side. All right, that's kind of a bad picture, but you can see the class two elastic. Here's another shot through there. And that's a bad shot, too. I don't know. One of the ladies was taking these pictures and didn't get the best shot in there. Now, upper, the upper teeth are lined up now, and there's a little gap in between them. This is, this is still a one eight right here. Uh, okay, 
Now we're getting pretty good. Now these teeth are beginning to torque out like your inner incisal angle now has changed considerably. We're just about to get together back at the back, back here. So it's coming along real nice. The guy's real happy with it. He can speak good. We've got this thing off of the back of his teeth. And we know we're through. We're going to succeed in this case. And, and so we continue going on. We'll get him together good. So this 2 of 08, we have him pretty well finished. Needs to keep those teeth clean a little better than that. But we're lining this up good. Now, we go, let me run through it pretty fast now, and we're holding that space on for this implant, and that's the lower arch, and that, it's calcium in there, some, got some tori, and they don't affect this, we can work right on with tori, if you wonder about them, we've had all kind of cases with tori, if they get some big, they push the tongue up, it's, Pretty good to have them removed. The old surgeon take them down. Then your tongue will stay down in the bottom a lot better. <coughs> Excuse me, but you really don't have to uh, worry about Torah. Just let it leave them there. They don't usually grow that fast. Okay, now it's leveled up pretty doggone good, except the second molars back there don't look all that good. Now these teeth right here. They were angled like that, now they're angled this way. These teeth that were angled this way, now they're angled that. Pretty, pretty good angle to them. Now that's, we've come forward with them a lot. You've got some little spaces where the gum tissue was squeezed out before, so they're going to have a little gap in there. It may have to be, you can fill them different ways, but that's a kind of a little odd shape, a lateral, it doesn't look like when we get this in the right position, this in the right position, this lateral doesn't look like it's going to be big enough, so you could crown that and run your crown down more like that, and, and it will look much better, I don't know whether you ever did that or not, but and the lower is lined up and it's down and the laterals on the bottom are not quite large enough and they were crowded it looked like he's going to have to take them out now you've got extra space on the bottom uh, excuse me this is the top this is the extra space on the top all right on the bottom we've held this gap for his implant and this is lined up, but this is, he needs to get something to scrape that out. Uh, all right, here he is. Okay. Let's see, I think it's a little after this. Yeah. Okay, we finish him up, and we bond a 3-to-3 three three retainer down on the bottom. And I put him in a lower retainer because we need to put a saddle on this. And he, he occludes against that. And that will hold this space till he gets ready to do the implant. Then they can put the implant in and they can cut out the bottom of this little acrylic saddle. <clears throat> and keep your, while you're waiting on this implant, if they're going to take a while to do it. And this is a wraparound retainer, goes around the back molars, nothing crossing over other than this little saddle that we put in. You see the track of the upper molar right here. That'll hold it up in place until you get ready and put your crown in. Okay, come in from this. This is where it was in 03 of 06, and there it is in 08. 29 of 08. So that's a two years and a little bit more. These laterals are not quite big enough. We put these teeth where they need to be, the cuspid where it needs to be. And really, you ought to just fill that in and put a 
crown or build a build up on that lateral. Now we've got something in the space over here where we had this space. Maybe we can see it from the top here. There was your gap in 06, and there it is in 08. And I'm shooting from the side, and I can't really see what's going on in here. But that's where he had an implant put in. There's from the side, the 06. And that's 08. Let's see the, what the hope we did the other side. It's the upper, upper again, and that was the starting part on the bottom where this deal's tooth was just missing when it did that. And here's the bottom. Oh, yeah, there's your implant, you see. We've got it in here, but he wear something here to hold this open. In other words, you can cut the bottom out of your little saddle you've got across here and it'll keep this space and keep the upper tooth from dropping down in there while you're waiting on that implant. And that's his upper retainer and bottom retainer. And that's the upper retainer there. Now he can take those out when he's talking and then he puts them back in when he's got the uh, he doesn't get to where he can speak with the retainers in there. So there's where we started from, both sides. And that just shows you what you can do with these in, intruding arches. So I hope you'll look at this. I hope you enjoyed it. We appreciate you watching it. But they work. So get in there and try, try this. You can open these very difficult cases. Now the torque and the inner and sidle angle on these teeth is good. This is a small lateral. It needs to be crowned too or else it needs something to build up in here. So I'm going to sign off and thank you again for watching. And I'm going to stop this.